Hi all, and welcome to another episode of T-Shirt Talk, where I talk about T-shirts that I bought, normally from concerts, but not always the case. And uh, if I've got a little story to tell about it, or if it's an interesting shirt, etc. etc. So today, I'm going to go straight for the jugular, and it's Earth Tone 9, which, there we go, you can see it, is a fantastic shirt. It's white, which is unusual. And I'm trying to get a few more different coloured shirts. I think, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got loads of black shirts and I, I haven't got a problem wearing them. But it's nice to just have a little bit of variety. And um, I didn't used to think white suited me. I think people, metalheads, think that, really, you know. Um, kind of, anyway, to a degree. But uh, I've got some other coloured ones as well. Green and uh, I've got a yellow one, I think, and or whatever. So that's pretty cool. But this one's as you, obviously white, um, and which is good because it shows off a different contrasting style, I think. Um, it's got greys in there as well. Earth Tone 9 logo at the top, fading down. It's even in that big greyness, but I don't know if you can see it on the camera. And you've got an old guy and a skull shutting each other up, presumably. That's what the message is. I don't exactly know, but I think it's great. Now, Earth Tone 9 merch, I never really had much success with them, to be honest, because I don't think they released a lot of, uh, of uh, T-shirts. Oh, I never was able to find much anyway. Um, but uh, I first got into Earth Tone 9. I first got into them. It was around about 1999, and I remember listening to them. I can't remember if I just bought the CD out, right? Or I got a feeling that it was through Kerrang! magazine. And um, this was when Kerrang! were quite good. Subjective, but I don't think they are nowadays. I think they've gone completely away from uh, where they used to be and not for, away from my style anyway. So, But in those days, in the in the sort of... Um, when I went and I first buy Kerrang! Crikey... Um, Eight, maybe late 80s I can't even remember when they formed but it wasn't then it was, it was, but it was a long time it was definitely in the early 90s easy so I was always buying that it was a weekly mag um, and uh, they used to give away tapes and with a few tracks on I don't know 8, 10 tracks and used to play the cassette and listen to new music that way that was the only way in those days really um, well, there was, was other ways, but it was very, it was all very limited. I used to also buy CDs and cassettes, uh, well, and vinyl, but this was going back before that, with, through album recommendations. And um, I know, I know the Krang did go on about Earth Tone 9 quite a lot. Um, Earth Tone 9, they, they were around, they formed uh, in Nottingham in the United Kingdom. And they only, sadly, they only lasted till about 2002. So I never, I, I don't know why, I never got to see them on tour. I don't think they, they were from Nottingham, which isn't that far. But I never saw them. So um, the album that I got into was was called Earth, um, sorry, Off Kilter Enhancement. And and I remember playing it and I, and I enjoyed it. But it was it was like, it was a listenable record. It was good. And and I kept playing it because I think in, in like um, before, heavily before the internet, Internet was around in the in the late nineties, but it was a lot more lower key. There wasn't many, there wasn't that many people into the internet. It was a lot smaller. So um, before the internet, I think you focused more on an album. You bought it, you gave it more attention, you played it. You, I think today's today's music is great. It's fantastic. You can get into lots of bands, but I think it's very throwaway, isn't it? It's digital music, and people listen to a couple of tracks, and and they'll discard it, and it's a shame. But I don't think that was the case. In, in in older times where, where you had a, a physical format you, you you bought it obviously you know with hard-earned money and and you played it and you played it this is what I was doing I played it several times I must have played it about eight times or something and I was, I was like yeah this is good and then I just played it like maybe the ninth time and and my enjoyment level just rocketed from from this sort of enjoyment level of yeah this is all right to sort of top tier and I'm and it, all the songs started kicking together all the started all, all the sort of uh, lyrics and uh, all the little melodies and all the drum pattern connections and riffs and everything just flowed and it just became this powerhouse of a monster of a record and it's still 
one of my favourite albums of all time. Earth Tone 9 off Kilter Enhancement. Stunning, stunning album, and I would recommend it to anybody. What does it sound like? Well, it's hard to categorise. They were like a heavy alternative band mixed with elements of Tool and maybe progressive metal influences elements. Some of their stuff was quite heavy, but they'd have long some post metal stuff in there as well. I, I would say, you know, uh, I would say that, that that Neurosis. I would say they they um, they inspired them a bit, you know. Um, so they, they have got a bit of a mixture of all sorts of music. The vocalist Carl Middleton is stunning. Every, every, everyone in, on the album is stunning. And they they released the follow up album. Uh, I I also get the name. I don't know why. Arc Tangent. Uh, they released Arc Tangent, which was a couple of years later. That's Arc Tangent, um, which is which is a stunning, stunning follow up, which is which is actually regarded, and and I don't dispute it. Maybe I do a little bit. <laughs> um, it's regarded as, as their strongest album, and I and and I I see it as a very strong album, but to me it's it's got it's it's um, it's off kilter. Enhancement for me. I, I think I think sometimes I think when it's close I think this is the first album you get into and it's you know Discovering that that band link that you feel is a, a, a Nostalgia thing. I think that represents the quality in an album sometimes like you know that connection and and Yeah, and going back to like the Earth Tone 9 album that I was enjoying the, the, the one that got me into it you, I did feel that connection it, with the band, I felt like everything they were trying to tell me and all their messages, all their songwriting was just coming through to me. It was incredible. So, sadly, they split in 2002 and we didn't hear anything from them but until 2010, which is great. Sorry, my cat is scratching. Stop it, cat. <laughs> Shelly, it's my cat, Shelly. Oh, right, so we got great production values in these videos. Right, she's getting off now, sorry. <laughs> Top quality videos, these. <laughs> okay, um, right. So they they reformed in 2010, May 2010, which which I was like, I remember hearing the news, and I was like, wow, they're reforming. This is fantastic. And um, they announced they announced they were playing Damnation in in 2010, but that that was they announced that in in uh, before the announcement of of when they the other announcement. In fact, makes no sense. But so. Basically, they were playing Sonosphere on the 31st of July, 2010, uh, on a Saturday. And which Sonosphere is a, is a, was a great heavy metal festival in Stevenage, near London. It was um, three days or something. I can't remember how many days it was, but it was it was a few days. It was an awesome event, um, and they were playing on on a small stage. Um, and they only had half an hour, but I was, I remember like, cause I wanted, I was about half five. I remember queuing up, well, looking around where they're going to play. So I found this, the stage cause this was, I think they were the first, one of the first bands playing and um, we got there not that long before. So, so I, uh, yeah, I was, I found the stage. It was only a small stage and um, got the bow. Yeah. There wasn't that many people there. I'm like, right. Yeah. Earth turn nine. going to watch these. So I was, I was at center, center of the front stage cause I was really buzzing. I was excited. I, I was telling people at work that weren't interested, you know, uh, sort of some woman on production line who's putting bolts in. I'm going to go and see Earth Tone 9 tomorrow. <laughs> she don't care, but I'm so excited. I can't help. I can't help tell people sometimes. I get a bit like that. Um, and so anyway, um, they were they were played. They played their set and, and it was I'm singing along. I'm singing along to everything. I'm loving it. I'm headbanging. I'm singing along. It's just euphoric. It's phenomenal because I never saw them I, I, I never saw them in the earlier days when they was around so this was my time to see them and uh, I was so disappointed when they um, when they called it a day in 2002 and and right I didn't actually this is I feel a bit of a cheat now but I didn't buy this at the show because this was a, this only came out a few years ago uh, two years ago or something like that um, um, I've always had a little bit of not had much success with Earth, Earth Tone Nine merch, really. To be honest with you, either um, I wasn't very keen on um, 
what they did, their, their, their artwork, or um, I don't think, I think for me personally, I think Earth Tone 9 is, is about, is purely about the music. I don't really like their artwork too much. I mean, that's a decent, I suppose that's a decent album cover, you know. Um, the other one, Off Kilter Enhancement, is, I mean, this was only their second album, but it's not the best. But um, I never really had much success. So I did buy a bootleg. I did see them because um, I didn't like the, the merch in, in, the, in the actual gig itself. I thought it was not very good. I did buy a bootleg, but I didn't really, I, I only bought it because I just wanted some Earth Tone 9 merch. And, and it didn't fit me very well either. So, so I never really got any. So they, they re-released this or re made it especially new or whatever. But, and I just thought it was fantastic. And I thought that I like that. I like it and I'd wear that. And uh, yeah, it's a good size. It fits me well. So yeah. So that's, yeah. So uh, basically, yeah. So going back to the actual gig that I saw them at, they played. It was fantastic. I was in, I was just like so happy. It was amazing. And um, after the, after the show, I mean, that's, this was their first gig they played since 2002. So the band were loving it. They loved the reception because there was a decent amount of people there. You know, there was a good, it wasn't huge. I don't know how many people, I can't guess, a few hundred, I don't know. I'm not very, it's hard to, it's hard to gauge, but, but it went down well. And Carl Middleton, the, the vocalist, he came down the front and, and uh, I shook his hand and uh, I got him to sign, um, I bought a patch, um, not an Earth Nine patch, I bought a Sepultura patch uh, at, at uh, Sonosphere and he signed the back of it because I didn't have um, anything else for him to sign. But So we signed that. And I'm just like, oh, I'm loving life. And um, I was on such a high, such a high. I was, my heart was pounding and beating and, and I was loving it. And it was so great. And um, yeah, that's Earth Tone 9. So that'll, uh, that'll, that'll wrap up for, for today. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoy, please uh, like and subscribe. And also, if you've got any comments to say, I'd be, yeah, I'd be Please to read them and I'll, I'll get back to you. And if you've got any questions or anything on the, these videos or if there's something that you'd like me to cover or something that I'm missing out on, a, maybe a, a, to a topic that I could talk about on, on a, on a T-shirt or something like that, if you think is good, I can include, then great. We'll, we'll have a look. So thank you very much. Enjoy. Bye-bye.